Ever since the dawn of humanity, we have never been satisfied with an easy answer. Our endless quest of knowledge to make sense of the world has led to an unceasing search for the unseen. We search to know because we want to know, we need to know. Ancient Greek philosophers, in their inquiry to encapsulate the world, created the premise of an atom, the most basic building block of everything. Ever since then, scientists have sought to refine the model, but none of them ever imagined the immense power that could be harvested from it. The atom is composed of three subatomic particles, protons and neutrons in the core of the atom, and electrons orbiting around the nuclei. However, nobody knew that the neutron even existed until 1932. That year, an English scientist by the name of James Chadwick conducted an experiment that would ultimately end with the discovery of the neutron. The experiment itself involved alpha particles, or irradiated helium atoms, colliding with a beryllium atom, which would result in a neutral radiation being produced. Through his studies, Chadwick concluded that this radiation was a new, neutrally charged subparticle flying off from the atom. He named this particle the neutron, completing our modern model of the atom. The discovery was considered revolutionary among the nuclear science community, and many wondered what properties this new particle had, as well as how it reacted with the rest of the atom. As a result, scientists began experimenting with this new particle, with one of the most famous experiments being done in 1934 by Enrico Fermi, an Italian scientist. His experiment involved shooting neutrons at many different types of atoms. Through these experiments, he found that both heavier and lighter elements could be produced by bombarding the atom with neutrons. These results were puzzling to many scientists at the time, especially results concerning the production of much lighter elements. Many mysteries surrounding the subject would persist until Otto Hahn, a German scientist, and his assistant performed a series of tests similar to Fermi's in 1938 to 1939. Through his studies, he found that some of these lighter elements were created from shooting neutrons at uranium-238, a type of uranium. Side note, the term uranium-238, or U-238, is a shorthand to describe the type of elements and its weight in atomic units, respectively. He found this happen because as a neutron strikes the nucleus of an atom, it causes the core to become unstable and break apart, forming two smaller parts. At first, this discovery of splitting an atom seemed trivial, as it only produced radiated elements that were already commonly available. However, further studies by scientists by the names of Meitner and Frisch showed that with the splitting of the atom, energy and fast-moving neutrons were also produced. After this discovery, scientists began to hypothesize that these newly produced neutrons had the capability of splitting other uranium atoms. If so, a chain reaction could occur, where an initial atom could be split. The neutrons from the atom could fly off and split other atoms, causing them to also produce neutrons that could split more atoms. The end product would be billions of atoms splitting and producing energy with each broken atom. This process of creating a chain reaction from splitting atoms would go on to be known as fission. The collective energy of all these atoms was estimated to be so powerful it had the capability to level cities. This new discovery of uranium's ability to generate massive amounts of energy astounded scientists around the world. Much of the scientific study on fission was done in the country of Nazi Germany, which was ruled by Adolf Hitler, who had plans on dominating the European continent. As a result, Hitler wondered what use this technology could have in developing a weapon capable of causing mass destruction. A weapon like this would prove useful for his country, and deadly to his enemies. As Germany privatized much of its research, many feared that the Nazis would create an atomic bomb and use it for world domination. Albert Einstein was among those that were concerned, arguably the most famous scientist due to his studies on the properties of light and relativity. He worried about German nuclear weapons, and was concerned that the United States President, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, did not share his concern. As a result, Einstein and Roosevelt met with each other to discuss the possibility of Germany building this super weapon. After these meetings, along with a letter drafted by Einstein and a Hungarian immigrant, Leo Szilard, to the U.S. government to encourage a United States nuclear weapons program. 
They convinced the United States to create their own nuclear program, named the Uranium Committee. Later that year, Hitler had declared war on Poland, which marked the start of World War II. One major hurdle in the development of an atomic bomb was that only Uranium-235, a rare, lighter version of the very common U-238, might prove feasible for creating a chain reaction capable of mass destruction. Extracting this rare substance from its more common counterpart proved challenging and greatly hindered progress on the bomb. It wasn't even known for certain if this super weapon was truly possible, but a report by scientists by the name of Pearls and Frisch, appropriately named the Frisch Pearls Memorandum, helped push the government to further support development for the nuclear bomb. However, the greatest breakthrough for the project was a report from Britain to the United States released by the Military Application of Uranium Detonation Committee, also known as the MOD Committee. The report covered two subjects, the use of uranium for a bomb and the use of uranium as a source of power. While the former of the reports were the main focus, due to the project's purpose being to create a nuclear superweapon, other scientists, such as Enrico Fermi, had a fascination with how nuclear fission could be used to generate electricity. Enrico Fermi has done much of his studies in Italy, primarily in Rome. However, after Mussolini used a coup to establish himself as the leader of a fascist Italy, Fermi grew weary of this dictatorship and his racist ideals, and sought to leave the country. After receiving the Nobel Prize in 1938 for his work in nuclear physics, he took the opportunity to leave the country and immigrate to the United States. There he continued his studies at Columbia University, New York. When nuclear fission was discovered, Fermi was fascinated with its uses, including how it could be used as a power source. After the MOD report released their studies, Fermi organized a team of scientists to try and build the first nuclear reactor. In April of 1942, Enrico Fermi and his team relocated to the Chicago Met Lab in Illinois to begin work on what would be known as the Chicago Pile 1. The research division was allotted space under the football stands of the Chicago University football stadium. There, they planned to build the first reactor out of blocks of graphite, some of which contained uranium pellets that would be used for fission. Rods made of cadmium were also used in the reactor to absorb neutrons and stop fission within the reactor. After testing many different arrangements of these graphite blocks, they found a structure that they believed would work, and activated it to see if it could sustain the reaction. On the 2nd of December, 1942, Chicago Pio-1 became the first ever nuclear reactor to go critical, or successfully sustain the reaction, and proved the nuclear energy could indeed be used to generate electricity. Of course, the purpose of Chicago Pio-1 was only to prove the possibility, and no system was in place to actually generate electricity. It wouldn't be until the 20th of December, 1951, when Experimental Breeder 1 would be built. On that day, that reactor would make history by becoming the very first nuclear reactor to produce electricity. From the discovery of the neutron, to the splitting of the atom, to the first nuclear reactor to produce electricity, nuclear energy has come a long way from being a hypothetical concept, studied by few, to being a reliable source of energy that provides more than 10% of the electricity in the world. To this day, people are continuing to make advancements in nuclear physics and the history of nuclear energy is far from over.